Okay. Um, if you want to uh, ask a question, you can raise your hands in the participants list, and then um, uh, my colleagues will uh, give me a note when uh, I can answer that question. Uh, but if possible, we will do that uh, uh, at the end of uh, each uh, topic. And if you, uh, when you are uh, asked to post your question, then the, the host will uh, unmute you. Now, the, yeah, the screen, okay. So that's uh, about raising your hand on the right side. It's next to your name. And um, then you can, uh, we will take a look at it. Um, well, what, what about YAPS? Um, for those who don't know YAPS, Euronymous Academy of Data Science, a cooperation of Tilburg University and Eindhoven University, um, we offer a program in which three th items are combined. Of course, data engineering and data analytics, which is in most uh, data science programs. But we add on top of that data entrepreneurship, because we think that uh, data engineering and analytics combined is not enough to make really impact. And so we add entrepreneurship to that to make sure that analysts and engineers are working on the right topics and are also posting their solutions in the right way. It's not that we have a program for just engineering, just analytics and just entrepreneurship. No. What we do is we want to educate data experts who can combine all the three uh, skills because that is the way to really have impact. Yeah, you can find this back in the picture of Gartner um, where you also see IT skills, which is for engineering, data science is for analytics and business skills is for the entrepreneurship. I don't want to discuss this in detail. You get the slides later on and you can have a look at the hyperlink. We took a look um, in one of the, the, the researches into data science careers, um, and the research we took was from DataCamp. DataCamp is a well-known online learning facility. We also uh, use it in our program, um, and we recommend it because it had some very nice learning features. And um, they have given a quite nice overview of all different positions you can have in data science. So here you see the list. And to make it easy for you, we they also added the salaries, the American salaries to it. So you see, you can be a data analyst or a business analyst or a database administrator. You can do data engineering or data as, act as a data architect. And of course, you can be a data scientist. Um, this is a bit the American way. And I think, uh, John, uh, you will recognize most of those titles yeah, because you work very international. Um, but in Holland, I think most of the roles will be data, uh, data engineer, uh, data analyst, and data scientist. Um, so when we map those roles on our uh, triangle, then you see on the left side that there is a data architect, data engineer, database administrator. On the right side, we have a data analyst, a business analyst, a data ambassador, and on top, we have the data entrepreneur. There is one role which is not in the picture of data camp that is the role of um, analytics translator that's a bit of an, a newer uh, type of function and it's the role of a person who makes the translation between analytics and business the data ambassador by the way is also a role which you won't see that much but that's the role we defined as a person who is introducing data science into the company and what we really appreciate is many of our people they uh, um, are in fact data ambassador and they, uh, because they start education their own colleagues. I just realized we don't have a data um, diplomat. Maybe that's also a role to think of in the future. Um, now, if we talk about these positions in this uh, picture of data camp, who is joining this career path? Of course, there are starters coming in yeah, from school from a, uh, just a high school or, well, no, of course, university or a bachelor. But in fact, we have found out that there are three main streams coming in there. That's ICT experts, uh, people who really want to make a shift in their career from just IT into a bit more into the business. We have a lot of domain experts, people that know a lot about their business, but, well, think that data science can help them to make their domain expertise even more valuable. 
And the third one is a more business side. Those are entrepreneurs, project leaders, consultants. They actually quite often can't program. They don't have really expertise in statistics, um, but they still feel motivated to start learning programming and to do statistics. And that's a very interesting uh, flow. And it's also a very nice uh, flow, which brings a lot of um, yeah, dynamics into our program. Today, I have two people, uh, in fact, three, of course. Uh, John and Robin are, for me, really the domain experts, the real born analytics people. And um, um, Stephen um, is more from the entrepreneurial side um, because he came in from an, a quite different role. But he also made this path. And of course, if you could think of a follow up, you can stay in data science or you can become uh, active in other roles. There are some advices about how you can make careers. This is just for reference for later on to have a look in it. But um, for us uh, in the data uh, expert uh, program, where, where we have the most experience in, we see that about 30% are IT people, 45% is from the domain expert uh, area and 25% is from the entrepreneurial side. Now we have done some analytics about what is making the most impact for the have, having success in data science. Is it, do you have need to have a good IT level? Um, well, as you can see in the blue column, the first column, um, that is not necessary. Um, when people enter with a level one of engineering, or when they uh, are, are starting level five. Um, the ambition is for all the people that they get to the level four or five. The same is for analytics and the same is for entrepreneurship. Um, so what we found is that um, it's not really what you have done in the past, which is uh, decisive. It's more what you um, have as ambitions for the future. So what matters for results, we have summarized that in two things. Um, when you have a data science challenge, please go out, talk with people about it, make sure that you do the right thing. And the second, team up. Um, make sure that you have a good team around you to make it happen. And that's how we want to uh, educate our data experts, uh, that they really go out to make sure they do the right thing and that they really team up, that they have the right people around them. And uh, you can do that, of course, live, as in the past, but also you can do it online. It's quite funny that uh, we had to make the change in our program for live lectures to watch online lectures. And um, I, th I th really am I'm proud of the fact that all the students made it happen that they still got in touch with their right colleagues, with even customers, prospects, fellow students, academic staff, not by having a cup of coffee at YATS, but, but by just connecting through all the online uh, tools we have in these times. So um, it sounds like an online activity or as a, as a live activity, go out and team up, but we really can do it online. This is my introduction from the, the YATS side. Um, let me have a look. Um, Chantal, uh, Nina, are there any questions already? No, no questions at this point. No? Okay. no? okay. Then uh, we just go on uh, to the real pitch of tonight, which is the story of uh, John. Um, John, can I give you the floor? Uh, first of all, uh, maybe it's nice to mention that uh, you are not only an expert um, in, um, uh, in, this, in this whole field, but you're also a lecturer at the, uh, the program of the data experts, and you even have guided uh, the first uh, students uh, into becoming a certified analytics professional. And uh, I always think it's good to, to say that you, John, you were the first one in Holland who got his certified analytics professional certificate from Informs. So um, in that sense, you're uh, an, uh, a unique uh, person. Um, let me, I see some things around on the screen. John, should I do the, the slides for you? Hold on. If, I, if you give, give me the control, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I gave you the control. 
Okay, thank you. Well, I think well, thank you for the introduction, Ronald, and also thank you for the invitation to uh, to give my view on data science careers. Um, yeah, so I can let's say uh, talk for hours, but uh, you only give me fifteen minutes to cram, let's say, my experience of thirty years into. So uh, I had to make choices. Um, uh, yeah, so so I, for for those who don't know me yet. Um, um, well, uh, I'm the current director and co-founder of Lytic, which is an organization that provides both the services and technology to improve decision making. So it's a, a data science company, you could say. And next to um, um, being part of the, the team um, that is uh, lecturing during the data expert program, I also uh, lecture more from a business sense at the Groningen University, uh, and then specifically on uh, professional education in digital transformations, where I specialize in the data science element. And next to um, lecturing, I also occasionally write uh, stuff about data science in practice or operations research in practice, which I do at um, the, uh, the Dutch uh, Statistics and OR Society, or yeah, maybe we should rephrase that to the Dutch Data Science Society, uh, in a uh, magazine called Stator, uh, where we reflect on the, yeah, how uh, analytics is applied in, uh, in practice. Uh, yeah, my contact details are there, so if you are interested in contacting me or uh, sharing insights or uh, uh, maybe uh, you want to a referral maybe uh, you want to connect to me just uh, for, for the fun of it please do so um i i am on social media uh, on a, a, a wherever yeah. you find is most appropriate and you have um, a great blog uh, uh john uh, or at, <laughs> at work don't <laughs> you didn't mention it but uh, it's yeah uh, so if you if you are on linkedin you can immediately let's say find that um yeah i'm gonna ask me to talk about my career and uh yeah um i don't like cramped slide, so I had to make a choice. Uh, so I, I, I want to highlight five uh, elements of that career. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's 30 years long already, which makes me quite old. So um, I, I maybe even fall off, let's say, the, the skills that uh, Ronald just presented on whether or not to start a, a data science career. Um, I graduated in uh, 1990 and I started econometrics uh, 1985 and uh, if, if, if you look at the profile of a data scientist it's not that different from why I chose uh, this direction for uh, for um, let's say graduating um, somebody else also taking control of my screen not, hopefully not yeah. um, so it's, it's it's about using mathematics to understand business processes is it, it it's using data uh, and statistics to detect patterns that you can use uh, in uh, this, this mathematical models. And the key thing is really to improve um, either business processes or gain insights based on which um, yeah, you can either improve a supply chain, uh, but, 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 but you can also think about, for example, the quality of life uh, after a, a, a kidney transplant or heart transplant. So one of the things that I did during uh, my studies was um, applying what I've learned immediately by becoming an assistant uh, of one of the professors uh, at the Erasmus University. Uh, and I helped him um, create uh, models uh, to make a decision about whether or not to uh, award or to assign or to match, be even better, um, a patient with a donor kidney. Uh, and we expanded these models to also contain uh, heart transplants and, and lung transplants, which makes a, a rather ethical question whether or not to match, for example, a patient that has smoked for 50 years um, and drank a lot um, uh, with a new kidney. And um, uh, because there are not enough, let's say, of these donor organs, uh, that you um, might also need to decide to um, give it to somebody else who potentially has more uh, value uh, how you and then it's the question how you define value um, uh, for, for um, having this kidney um, it was the first step uh, and if you if you look at the current developments in the market ethical data science or medical applications for data science are more and more becoming uh, yeah common uh, uh, which is in 30 years time uh, still an interesting development um, after graduating, uh, actually, I uh, was already recruited uh, before I, uh, I graduated from uh, the university in Rotterdam uh, by the founders of uh, Ortec, maybe a company you know, a company that was founded even something like 81 or something. Um, and at that time, Ortec was really what you would now call a startup. Um, so uh, they had an office, uh, about 10, 15 people were there. 
we had a dog, uh, which was also quite nice to walk <laughs> with the dog outside. Um, uh, when you were the, the, the last one uh, that joined the team, uh, you also had the task to, um, to go uh, shop for, uh, for lunch. So you had to get in uh, the bread and all the, the stuff that needs to go with it. Uh, it was really a fun uh, uh, way to, uh, to start working. I really live uh, what I thought was uh, at that time uh, the best thing that I, could, that I could do. And it is use data and models to, uh, to support organizations. Um, there was some kind of a rude awakening. Uh, because um, one of my first assignments was to um, you know, think about where to position a new warehouse for at that time Schuitema, which is now, uh, I, can, I guess, given all the, uh, the the mergers and stuff, it's now called Jumbo. Um, and, and that warehouse, well, uh, of course, if you are in logistics, you know that you need to have something like distances and driving times. And uh, we're talking 1990. Uh, we've, uh, we had a first desktop computer. Uh, with floppy disk drives, uh, no hard disk, and uh, yeah, Google Maps didn't exist. So my first thing was to really uh, get out and, uh, and uh, buy a, uh, a, a paper uh, map of the Netherlands with all the main roads on it, uh, digitize it, uh, and then calculate with uh, the famous Dijkstra algorithm what the shortest round, uh, routes would be between each point on the map. Uh, this took me um, about two or three weeks to accomplish, uh, something that we now not even think about. Um, uh, so that's <laughs> compared to 30 years back, uh, definitely an improvement. I've worked for Ortec for uh, 25 years, which is quite a long time. And you might think, well, how come? Uh, and actually I didn't experience it as, as a, as a uh, let's say a long streak of 25 years. Uh, I did a lot of different things within Ortec. Uh, first of all, there was really pioneering uh, using mathematics and optimization models to support companies like uh, Schuitema in the first yeah, five or six years. Then the next step was really to design new solutions for uh, specific challenges that, uh, that companies have. And I focused specifically on resource management. Uh, and together with my team, I designed a, uh, an, an, an algorithm that can uh, um, find opt optimal schedules for, uh, for example, nurses in hospitals, but also for workers in, in industry. Um, and uh, yeah, this was really a learning experience because we didn't know how to create such a product. We really had to invent uh, all the processes, but also the, the necessary uh, yeah, software needed to be developed in, in order to have that algorithm well encapsulated and people really having fun uh, in using the system to, um, to solve this, um, to solve their uh, planning problems. Um, John, uh, am I right that when I say that uh, your work is still active? Yeah, so, yeah, so I'm not sure if it's still, let's say, in the same condition. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, 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 let's say, yeah, 20 years old uh, compared with the first, uh, um, let's say yeah, the designs of the software, but it's still uh, an active product of uh, of, of our tech. It's uh, still something that is uh, being used and being sold and being implemented. So it's still there. Yeah. Um, another um, chapter in my uh, career within Nortec was to focus on risk management. So it is definitely totally different from uh, from logistics or supply chain. Uh, this was focused on uh, uh, pension funds and insurers. And there we uh, act actually revisited some of the knowledge that I gained from my uh, education. Uh, because when you talk about pensions and insurance, you have to do with uh, yeah, survival rates, uh, the, 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 the probability of an injury or the probability of an accident, and what is the impact of the accident there. I could really use my econometric knowledge. Uh, but also um, there the translation to the decision maker, which in, in most cases were people that were not very well educated in terms of analytics or the use of data or even understanding risk very well. Uh, so these were at that time the pension um, yeah, directors that, that needed to make decisions on which premium to, to ask uh, their uh, sponsors, uh, which are the, the, the companies, uh, but also how then to uh, manage that uh, uh, money coming in uh, to pay for a pension that will be paid in 30, 40, maybe sometimes even 45 years later. Uh, and that um, experience in talking to yeah, non-trained analytics people was really worthwhile to me to, uh, to really understand that it's necessary, not only to be somebody who understands the techniques of, uh, of, of, of the statistics very well and, and modeling very well, but also being able to listen very carefully to the people that use these models to make decisions. 
um, so understand what their key issues are. Uh, on the other hand, also being able to uh, convey the results from your analysis in such a manner that you can explain to people uh, less technical than yourself uh, what they should do with the insights that you've gained. Um, and that was really a, a very worthwhile experience that I still find very uh, worthwhile. I, I use it still every day when I talk to, uh, to customers or uh, people that, uh, that want to know about what is the success factor of applying analytics to anything. It's really about communication and being able to translate what you know, or what your insights are from the analysis towards um, a context in which people can really work with it, either understand or base their decision on them. Um, yeah, the finest thing uh, of my finest hour at Ortec was really the, the period in which I worked for TNT Express. So I went back to TNT or to, to logistics, uh, where I worked uh, with a, uh, together with the University of Tilburg, with one of the founders of Yats, with Hein Fleure, a professor there, and uh, a team of uh, yeah varied in size, but it was a team between 10 to 20 people in total that dedicated was dedicated to work for TNT Express, helping them to optimize their supply chain. And their key challenge there is to, first of all, service their customers, but at the lowest possible cost. And uh, if you think about it, that's really a very uh, yeah, awkward balance that you need to, uh, to, to make. A very ch challenging problems uh, from an operations research perspective, but also from a uh, econometrics or data science perspective, uh, forecasting what future demand would be, for example. And based on that, decide okay where to position new warehouses how to organize the european road network uh, how to optimize the air network how to design a global network so all kinds of interesting very tough problems to solve uh, and that resulted in finally uh, uh, after a couple of years uh, that we applied for the animal award uh, the animal award is, a, is an award from informs uh, an organization that you will hear, hear a, a little bit more about later on um, it's the yeah the global analytics uh, society uh, promoting uh, our our uh, our profession, uh, but also uh, an organization that does a lot in education, and they reward every year uh, the most yeah impactful data science or impactful analytics project. Um, it's not something that you can apply for. It's really the organization that needs to apply for it, and uh, well you can already see. Uh, we won uh, together with TNT and the Tilburg University, which was quite an accomplishment. So this uh, was um, what just one year after uh, the Nens already was awarded the Edelman Award for the work, or uh, one or two years before for Dutch Railways. They uh, they also uh, were, were awarded with the Edelman Award. And the year after, uh, Dick ten Hertog, former director of uh, the JATS and a full professor at the Tilburg University, won this uh, Edelman Award again um, for the work that he did for Deltaris, which determined the uh, the best economic height of, uh, of the dikes in the Netherlands. Uh, so that was, uh, in a couple of years' time, three, uh, yeah, quite, uh, yeah, I, I think, I, I believe it's really a recognition of the level at which we are in the Netherlands with respect to data science. Otherwise, these, these awards would not have been assigned to, uh, to yeah. such uh, projects. Because, John, I think that all the other awards were just American winners, eh? Most of them are, yes. Yeah. So um, there, there are not that many European uh, contestants because it's, of course, informs as a, a US based organization. But the, the competition is open to, uh, to everybody who wants to apply. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. I don't know that many uh, European or outside US based uh, winners. Um, it has been a competition since 71. So it's uh, definitely, let's say, going on for uh, quite a while. And yeah. there's a, a mixture of, uh, of organizations really winning the award. Uh, so from, uh, for, for example, American Airlines winning it for the revenue management invention between quotes, but also, uh, for example, um, HP, or IBM, uh, oh no, IBM didn't, uh, didn't ever win it. That's one of my uh, running gags against them. <laughs> um, no, I'm not sure if somebody of IBM is in the, in the public, oh, uh, by the way, John. Uh, maybe, maybe you've lost a con uh, participant then, sorry for that. No, 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 um, but it's, it's the ambition which is driving us. Yeah, there is, there is somebody of IBM who registered. Yeah, but okay. let, let's say it like this, to win the Edelman Award is the best ambition to start your data science career, isn't it? It, it's at least one of the things that you would need to, uh, well, I think it's in that indeed, let's say, an interesting aim to look at. You could think a little bit smaller. So if you're in the Netherlands, there's also the Dutch Data Science uh, Award. 
okay. uh, which is uh, also every year. Uh, this year, the competition has not finalized yet. Yeah. So maybe you can still participate. Yeah. And, it, and it requires more or less the same. Uh, it needs to be a, a project that is uh, on a, a applied data science. Yeah. Uh, it needs to be uh, a project that has delivered uh, significant results. Um, and yeah, uh, there's a committee that uh, also looks at the background. So uh, if it's it's more than between quotes, uh, just uh, crunching some numbers, it really has to do yeah. with yeah. Uh, changing the way in which people did their work yeah. before the project and really yeah. also some significant savings. Yeah, um, it's, it's really business and society impact. It just yes. as what, yeah. what we have as a goal as YAS, it's also the core of the, the Informs Edelman Award. Yeah. And that's why we, we really uh, yeah, like that program. Yeah. So, uh, okay. But then you shifted toward Bearing Point. What was the reason for your change? Yeah, so my, what I, I so the, the calculator in Ortec is really about, let's say, it's, it's really, let's say, one of the, uh, the phrases that Ortec used to present itself is it that you can count on Ortec, or in Dutch, uh, op Ortec kunt u rekenen. And that was really what the company was about. It's really a, a, a bunch of very smart people uh, building uh, good software, uh, but really focusing on, on, on the calculation part. And what I really missed, and that what, what is something that I encountered when I did my work with ENT, was really changing uh, the way in which organizations work and really adopting data science or analytics in their decision making. That's something that I found really hard uh, uh, to get, let's say, uh, done uh, at Ortec. And that's what I found uh, at Bearing Point. There I headed the analytics uh, team in, in Amsterdam and with my ambition to uh, set up a, an analytics hub for Bearing Point in Amsterdam. And after, uh, yeah, while well, this was uh, between quotes done uh, and I had the opportunity to set up my own company. So uh, I also fill in the entrepreneurship, uh, let's say, role. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, not only the data expert role. Um, and and, and you know, I will introduce that Zylitic uh, already. It's, a, it's, it's a, a company around a analytics platform uh, focused on decision making. Yeah. Um, you, you've done the full circle. You started with a startup. Now you're again with a startup. In between, you were with big, big companies in an advisory role and, an, and also an implementation role. Mm -hmm. So you, you've seen a lot uh, in the whole. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully if people have questions about it, they're free to uh, let to reach out and uh, I'm happy yeah. to share uh, the experience. G given time, um, uh, one key question that you asked was also, okay, when you did your econometrics role, where did all these colleagues of your, uh, let's say, end up? And that's in the next slide. Um, yeah, this this one. So maybe good to, to know that when I did my uh, econometrics degree, um, about 300 people started. Uh, the study, but only 40 graduated. So that's uh, that's about the percentage of people that uh, that reached the uh, let's say the, the end uh, of the um, of the um, uh, uh, of the, the course. And if you look at uh, where did they end up, uh, a lot of them uh, went into consulting. Um, so that's really uh, the the McKinsey, uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers type of let's say consulting strategy consulting, um, and. When I, uh, some of them I still talk to, and what I uh, see is that, uh, and that that's maybe also for a lot of the other areas, uh, so you can see where, where all, all the other people, let's say, went. A lot of them really don't do anything uh, with the, the things that they learned during, let's say, their studies. So m most of them are, um, are in management. Uh, so that's, to me, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm more of a content person. Uh, and not a lot of people, let's say, did this. And I think that's also the key thing between the data scientist and somebody who um, is in management roles, that the data scientist is still very content driven. Uh, a person that really thinks uh, about data and about decision making and about process, and really uh, think it through and, and come up with a solution to a problem. Well, a, a lot of the uh, people that uh, I, yeah, I studied with, let's say, ended up in management roles in banking and insurance. Uh, in industry, um, not doing a lot of work anymore themselves. They do have a background. Uh, John, in, you, yeah. you're, you're referring to the fact that they are not data driven anymore? Yes. Because if, if yeah. you, you say, I'm, I'm the content guy, and yeah. you are data driven, you want to only do only things that are really based on facts, on data, on models. Mm -hmm. and, and in your view, quite a lot of them shifted towards more intuitive. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's quite peculiar. Um, yeah. So even though if you're trained, and that maybe has to do with, let's say, um, the way in which you 
uh, make can make a career within these larger organizations. Had so a role of a data scientist or the role of an analytics type of person. Yeah. It's very difficult to really define a career for that. Yeah. Now you see more and more organizations open up, and that's why I, I put this on. Uh, is to really define, uh, for example, a career path for a more data-driven or more uh, analytic inclined person, yeah. uh, even at the C level. Eh? So there's the chief data officer. Uh, normally, it's a person that is below the IT. But uh, now you see more and more often organizations that really make data a central element of their strategy, and therefore also want to have a person in the boardroom that is responsible uh, and but also knowledgeable for the fact that he, he or she knows a little bit a bit about data and how what you can do with it, and also how you yeah. then as a use to change decision making. But I think we can quickly agree that the, the way how you are welcome at companies has changed a lot, especially the last 10 years. And when you were, uh, 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 you had a difficult story to tell 10 years ago, mm -hmm. you're very, very well, much welcomed in these days. Yeah. And uh, right. especially in those Corona times when people can't rely on experience anymore, but they really have to rely on what, what is really going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Indeed. So this is a bit of my story. Um, um, would you like to come? Would you like me to comment on some other elements, or uh, do well, I, I, I think I'll prefer to to take a look at the, uh, to the fact if there are questions. But I'm a bit careful by touching the screen because then maybe I'll take your controls again. I'll give um, a remote, maybe... remote control, so you can. Okay, go. thank you, uh, Chantal, um, Nina. Are there any questions at the moment? And no questions in the chat box. But if anyone does have a question, please just either raise your hand or uh, chat uh, chat it to us. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't indeed don't see any hands at the moment. Okay. But let's go for the, the third sub uh, topic then, uh, because John, that's again you <laughs> with your expertise. Um, of course, you, you can rely a lot on, on, on stories from people. Um, but we also thought, well, wh why not advise on certain areas where you are locations where you can find more information. Um, you already mentioned INFORMS, eh? that's the, uh, the OR stands for Operations Research. Yeah. Um, can, you, can you tell a bit about what INFORMS has done for your career? Yes, yeah. so INFORMS is the, it stands for in the uh, Federation of Operations Research Management Society, uh, Science. Um, it's an international one and what I promote really is uh, as I said, they want to share stories about the impact of analytics and operations research and, and data science uh, and now they also let's say include uh, artificial intelligence so anything that has to do with data and models uh, and they want to uh, build a bridge actually between uh, the, the, the people that are trained to do this and uh, yeah, potential users of it and this can be uh, government, this can be, uh, let's say, uh, healthcare, but uh, of course also a lot of companies. So they really bring together uh, a lot of knowledge and help you uh, really to, um, and let's say, get your message across. They do training, yeah, so the Animal Awards actually also kind of way of uh, in which it supports because it puts uh, data science uh, in, in into the spotlight and really sh shines a light on what we can do. Um, they. Uh, ne next to let's say the marketing elements, so they provide training. Uh, so that's in that training on all kinds of technologies, but also what's on the screen, the, the certified and Linux professional certificate, um, which is a training program that um, takes. Uh, I'm not sure some of the people in uh, in the last that pro uh, program, let's say, took the the training, um, and it let's say provides you with a certificate that, well, more or less, let's say, indicates that you our all-round type of trained people, that uh, person that knows about how uh, uh, what analytics is about and how to apply it in, into practice. So it's not a theoretical uh, certificate, but it's really about the application of analytics to all kinds of yeah. business problems. John, when uh, we talk about training, it's just a few weeks. Eh? It's, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, of course, the, the, the fundament has been put together by the, the YATS uh, Data Expert Program. Mm -hmm. uh, but indeed, if you think, well, I want to prepare even better, then you can do some extra rehearsals and mm -hmm. then you do the, the, the examination via an online uh, facility. Yeah. Uh, you, you spend about two or three hours working on certain uh, challenges and then you, you, you learn straight away if you get the certificate, yes or no. Yeah, uh, the reason for Infos, uh, by the way, I was a part of the, the committee that designed uh, the content of the program, um, of the, the COP. Um, so the reason for having the certification was really to make a difference between people that say they are data scientists or an analytics person and the ones that really got the training from it. And 
maybe in the Netherlands it's less of an issue. So it could be uh, the reason that, that you say, well, I have a training from uh, an applied science uh, uh, organization or maybe even a university. Uh, internationally, there is no guarantee. Yeah? For example, I, I do a lot of international work. Uh, nobody knows the Erasmus University from Rotterdam. Yeah, they kind of know what uh, Amsterdam is. Uh, but if you say that you graduated there, it's, it's for them not really a proof of, uh, of value. But if you say that you have a certificate from the INFORMS, uh, so the, the COP certificate, that's something that they can relate to. And they can also find information about it. And that's for sometimes, even though maybe not, it's not the same as a degree, uh, it's, it's a way at least internationally to, uh, to also show what you can do. Uh, yeah. so for me, that was really worthwhile. And that's also yeah. the, the type of support that I get from INFORMS. So they yeah. regularly invite me also to lecture uh, recently. Uh, they had their first virtual conference. Uh, and there, again, let's say they really like, let's say, people from Europe to also participate in that because they really focus on getting this, uh, making this a global, uni uh, a global uh, yeah. initiative. Uh, John, there is, there is a question from David. Mm -hmm. uh, general question, what is your uh, or the YATS experience with data science careers in high-tech systems? For example, on uh, ASML, uh, size, uh, whatever. Um, I don't think, yeah, you, you, you've been working, of course, with clients in the high tech industry. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. But do you think that is, is yeah, can you tell something about what ha what's going on there or how relevant data science is there? Yeah, so it's it's very relevant. Eh? So a lot of high tech, uh, if, uh, I'm not sure if you would, uh, for example, if you look at Dell, for example, they really, um, I'm not sure if you. Duplicated uh, Dell it really let's say made a difference in a way in which they uh, delivered their uh, their their laptops and uh, computers. Uh, so it's really uh, a make to order type of uh, approach, and with, uh, that that could not be could not have been achieved if they didn't have the data to sense that uh, what people would like to have, and also how to organize your supply chain in such a way that you can really deliver that. Uh, and, and, and other high-tech elements, so for example, the product design of Apple, uh, the, uh, the, the, the complex supply chain of creating, for example, ventilators that uh, Philips did, so it's more healthcare, uh, yeah. but also the uh, design of chips is something that is full of, uh, of data science and operations research. So without yeah. it, there was no possibility to uh, create these uh, computer chips. So it's definitely... Can, uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I can add briefly to that, uh, David, that we have, uh, for example, uh, people from Thermo Fisher, uh, in uh, Eindhoven, who did uh, the course, and uh, maybe we can uh, bring you in touch with one of those persons who did the uh, data expert program. Um, so uh, I think uh, Nina or uh, Chantal can uh, um, get in touch with you about that. Um, another question is from how about bioinformatics? Um, yeah, John, I think you've done a lot, especially <laughs> modern healthcare, but not yeah, in bioinformatics. No, but um, yeah, so maybe, uh, so if you, uh, I'm not a real expert on that. Um, what the clumps closest, uh, what we have seen recently is, um, let's say the use of data to predict, for example, how COVID, uh, let's say, spread across the world. Yeah. Uh, and also how effective, let's say, these different measures are. So it's definitely not uh, spot on with respect to bioinformatics. But I know, I, I know that there's a lot of work there in data science where people want to understand how uh, different molecules and enzymes, let's say, are, are constructed and maybe how they can engineer yeah. something that is uh, that is good, uh, for example, to uh, to fight certain uh, diseases or maybe yeah. um, uh, strengthen, let's say, certain um, crop kind of thing. So I know that a lot of uh, thing, uh, things are going on there as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that also uh, for Jeroen, who had his last question, I uh, would like to refer to the person who works at uh, Thermo Fisher because they are really into bioinformatics they do uh, those uh, electron microscope type of things mm -hmm. um, but let's see uh, we, we get in touch with uh, both of you uh, to see if we can give a follow-up on that I, I would like to move on to uh, the panel discussion um, John if that is okay with you yes yeah, right yeah so I'll uh, skip a few slides um, so welcome to Robin and uh, Stephen uh, first of all uh, Stephen um, you are here from the business side and you came into uh, Yats, uh, uh, I think, one and a half year ago. Can you can you tell briefly what your background is and how what what made you make the move towards data science? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I started actually in uh, in sales, um, but when doing sales, uh, it was always driven by fact. So why should we actually buy stuff, and what's the added value of it? And at that stage, it was 2007, 2011. Um, 
at Hives. Uh, data wasn't widely available yet, but looking, okay, where can we uh, add some facts to actually showcase the added value of what we're doing uh, would help a lot. Um, after four years of Hives, I said, okay, I want to start for, my, uh, for myself and start my own digital uh, consultancy firm, advising a lot of companies on different uh, digital aspects, being, uh, for instance, marketing, um, social media, sales. But at that stage, uh, Gwenitz was starting, and I had to prove at some stage how my, uh, or actually what I was doing uh, made sense, and therefore made the shift to more data where most of the companies didn't have uh, an, an analytics department or a data department at that stage. So ended up actually rolling into data without an actual focus on data and finding it really attractive and interesting and said, okay, I want to know more about it and be more hands-on and also know, okay, how can we brief certain specific departments on uh, how to make better use of data but also um, instruct the data scientists to actually see what is the question the business has or the challenge and to make the translation, okay, how are we going to, to solve this in actual data uh, objectives? And um, with that in mind, I said to my uh, one of my customers within my own firm, I want to do this for one company running it end to end. And they said, okay, if you want it, come to us. And so I started at TV Auctions, uh, being responsible for data and analytics for the two labels, BVA and Trostwijk, um, and making sure we are now creating one source of truth um, and making sure that we support the data in, or the, the business with data in uh, achieving their goals and uh, tackling their uh, challenges. Yeah, but Stephen, before people who don't know TV Auctions, how many deals do you make in a week or in a year on, on the TV options? How many deals? I would say we have around uh, BVA around uh, 100 options a week mm -hmm. uh, with each let's say route around the 300 uh, lots being auctioned mm -hmm. uh, and with a business to consumer focus and at Trostwijk we do a bit less auctions let's say uh, 15 auctions a week uh, with uh, the same amount of lots per auction, but with a more industrial focus, so business to business. But yeah. There are a lot of transactions. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of offerings. Eh? People are bidding all the time. So yeah. for you, it's very important that you, you generate bids. And then the, the, the diversity of products is enormously, eh? I think. Uh, uh, yeah, we auction, we auction everything. <laughs> yeah. Even the defense material, bikes. Yeah. Um, Play, uh, play goods, uh, whatever. Yeah, I, I yeah have everything seen. you have, uh, you can think of. We have auctioned it at least once. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and uh, as as uh, during the program, you were very much involved in the the customer experience and the click path and uh, analysis. And yeah, uh, yeah. it was really a, a tough job because of the diversity of products and the diversity of 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 people. So um, yeah, it's yeah, and uh, also the huge amount of data. Yep. And therefore, that would also be one of my advices to make sure what I've learned during uh, JELTS is, is, well, be aware of what you want to discover and what you want to uh, learn. Yeah. Uh, because otherwise you can drown quite easily in the huge amount of data available. Yeah. So having a strong focus on, okay, what, what am I going to try to, to solve? Yeah. And make sure you uh, collect the data for that specific topic. And was there ever a moment that you thought, well, this becomes too much for me, all this programming, all this data. I want to go back to my uh, nice storytelling with marketing. Um, there have been moments where you think of, okay, <laughs> am, I, am I able to solve this? Yeah. Uh, but I think that's also one of the, the nicest things of, of data. There's always someone around uh, who's, who knows more with data and can help you, but also uh, makes you enthusiastic again to make sure you, uh, you try a bit harder or, or approach it from a different angle. Yeah. And I think that will also make you more uh, adaptable in, in the business. Yeah. And now, of course, you're also in the growing area of the, of the company. Yeah? By, uh, you have hired a few people since you have done uh, the program. You know now yeah. how, to, how to hire people. You know what to ask from them. You can see quickly what they are doing and what they are able to do. So that, yeah. that was, uh, I think, a big difference uh, before. Okay. 
Um, maybe we'll come back to you later uh, with a with a question. Um, I would like now move like the move on to uh, Robin. Robin, you have a different story, different background. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, I also studied econometrics, like John has already told you about that, so I'll skip on that. Then at some point I uh, started working. I did an IT traineeship at then called SNS Real, a bank insurance company. Uh, these two split up and it got renamed to the, the Volksbank, uh, but it was still the same company. And uh, after my IT traineeship, at some point I got working in fraud detection, uh, trying to protect our customers from, for instance, WhatsApp fraud, dating fraud, phishing, uh, Microsoft scams, etc. And I think in, it was 2018 that I enrolled in the JETS uh, that program uh, using this yeah, case of fraud detection as my, my project to work on as well um, to yeah, improve my data science uh, skills as well, which is uh, of course pretty similar to the field of econometrics, but there are some slight subtleties. Uh, and at some point I uh, decided to change jobs and I started working at Pipple, which is a small da data science consultancy company uh, based in Eindhoven. Um, what else did I put there? I am currently I'm working in Python, but at the Volkspark I use many different languages. I'm also a bit of a content uh, guy, a uh, bit similar to John, uh, John I guess. Um, yeah, I think. Okay, that's and, it for a small introduction. Yeah, sure. And Robin, um, uh, just uh, what was the added value of uh, doing the, the the data science program at Yats compared to your uh, econometric uh, study? Ah, that's um, well. I did uh, more or less the, the operations research track there, which is more um, optimization. Uh, and uh, uh, making logistic models or uh, uh, planning problems, scheduling problems, uh, these type of problems. And it was a bit less focused on the machine learning part, so to say. Yeah. Um, and it was both due to my, my, my work at the fraud detection department as well as, uh, of course, my personal interest, but this was also, of course, greatly enhanced by the, the interesting lectures uh, to uh, yeah, deepen my knowledge on that uh, uh, subject area as well. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the term data science can be a bit broad. Uh, so you could consider two subfields of like optimization or like the prescriptive anal analytics, what sh should it, what's the best decision to make, yeah. or uh, predicting stuff, like yeah. is this transaction fraudulent or is it legitimate? Yeah, yeah. And I think one of the, the, the great things also that uh, when you do a data science course, uh, it's not a, a standard lecture thing at the university anymore, but you really can go out on your own uh, with a lot of online tooling, a lot of shared uh, code, uh, whatever. And um, yeah, and you, you met also a lot of different uh, careers paths with your colleagues in the group. With, and you're still a, as a group together, doing a lot of uh, discussions on the, in the WhatsApp group. And uh, yeah. Um, okay, let's have a look if there are more questions from the group. Um, I'm not, I don't see any questions from the chat at the moment. Okay, then, uh, then I'll go back to Stephen again. Stephen, um, when you when you look to uh, the situation before you did the the data uh, the, 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 your move into data science and in now, um, you could have chosen for uh, for a career path where you do some online courses, but you you chose for an, a, a real life course. Um, when you look back, did, did it really make a difference? Yeah, I think if you if you follow an online course, it's most of the time more theoretical and more. Uh, by yourself mm -hmm. and what I really enjoyed at the at the Yats um, education is that it's not um, cut up in little pieces but it's one bigger project divided over an entire year 
where you have lectures, but you also go into deep depth with, uh, with your own challenge and to see if you can solve it. And you have uh, your fellow students to have the discussions with, but also to help you uh, get started and ask questions if you get stuck. And due to the fact that it is your own challenge, I think it's, it's more beneficial uh, compared to online courses is that you actually try to solve something that will add value to to the business. Yeah. Okay. And, and did you already think about your next step? What 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 move would you make in the data science career as a data scientist? Uh, yeah. Currently, I'm really focused in the in the area of data and analytics. Yeah. Where my previous role was mere uh, consultant advising uh, across multiple uh, divisions. And uh, that's also something I really like. So having been uh, in one area for uh, most of my time, perhaps my next step will be again uh, more in consulting, helping other companies what I've learned and I've seen in the in the past few uh, few months, years. Yeah. Um, so, so my focus is more in more broad than really specific on a subject like uh, running my own um, prediction models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, want to become a, a real data ambassador eh? to bring yeah. the, the strong beliefs there. There is a, there is a question from Fritz uh, towards Robin. What is the biggest difference in working at Volksbank versus Pippo? So the difference between um, the corporate versus a startup. Yeah, it's a completely different situation also because at the Volksbank I worked uh, internally and now I'm a consultant. So I'm working in uh, several different companies for a project uh, on a project basis. Uh, and also the dynamics are very different. At Pippo it's a relatively young company. So I'm uh, in the older uh, part of the I think I'm in the uh, fourth quartile of, uh, if you uh, look at the age, so I'm, I'm one of the old guys at Pipple. Uh, <laughs> really. uh, uh, of Lankaus, by the way, that's your... Uh, yeah, your I'm not sure. Pippi Lankaus is a bit older, yeah. Yeah, but that's but the mascot uh, of Pipple, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, the dynamics are, are, are really different. Uh, and also, this this was, uh, I think, uh, yeah, you don't know what to expect uh, beforehand, before you change jobs, but it's, uh, one of my ideas was to be able to see a lot of different companies and what they do with data science and what I can add there. Um, and otherwise, you're working in one team for one subject area in a, in a very big company. Uh, having a smaller company gives you also the opportunity to oversee uh, everything. So if I, I wanted to, to to do something in sales, I could, or in hiring new people, I could, or uh, uh, yeah, it's easier to broaden your horizons that way. Yeah, but you're also working now in a company which really focus on on SDG goals, eh? the sustainable development uh, type of things. Do, do you do you notice that in your work? Uh, sorry, I, I think I mis I don't understand the question. Can you well, well people has a focus also on data science with purpose. Yes. Your 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 the whole culture of people is also focused on the SDG goals, eh, the sustainable development goals. Yes. Do you also notice that in the type of questions you have, the type of projects you do? Uh, sometimes, because uh, as we're relatively small, we have some projects in healthcare uh, mm -hmm. where a lot of data science. Uh, uh, where data science can help with uh, improvements because many, many improvements are still possible in healthcare. Uh, on the other side, of course, uh, uh, we, yeah, uh, we also have to earn some money to be able to, uh, uh, yeah, to, to do stuff for the, uh, making it a better world. So one of the things we did was we used um, aerial imagery, uh, at, a, at an insurance company in the Netherlands, but we also use this uh, for free for a, a development country. I forgot which one to detect uh, houses uh, or uh, vulnerable structures in case of flooding. Okay, yeah, so, oh, that's a nice example. Uh, 
Yeah. That would be a nice example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there is a last question from Peter. Um, does the JAS expert program also cover design principles for setting up, uh, setting up systems or platforms? Um, I, I can answer that myself. Yes, indeed, we do. Uh, we have a module data engineering, and there uh, we also um, focus on setting up uh, platforms to, to do the real stuff and to roll out your uh, yeah the solutions. Um, and the second question from Peter is, in what way are Dutch European ethics and legislation taken into account? We also have lectures on law and ethics. Uh, so the privacy law has been is a, a, a topic for a full day. And um, yeah, the, the dilemmas you have in ethics is also covered. That's part of the entrepreneurial part of the program. So, um, okay. And we, it's past uh, half past uh, eight already. Um, so um, it's now time to close. Uh, again, I would like to follow up for um, Jeroen and I thought it was David later on uh, to bring you in touch with somebody from uh, from the, the bioinformatics or the high tech industry. If there are any other questions you didn't want to ask during this online session, but uh, afterwards, please send an, an email um, to Chantal or Nina. Um, and, and then anyhow, you, you got an email from us so you can respond to that. And otherwise, we hope to see you again during one of the next sessions. It can be either a YAS session, uh, it can be uh, maybe an information session later on. Hopefully after the summer, we can uh, meet you uh, back again live uh, in the, the right place. Um, I want to close down with a small um, uh, item. Um, of course, some people maybe have, have joined for tonight for uh, uh, because of the interest of uh, becoming a uh, um, data scientist as the sexiest job in, um, in this century. However, um, sexy was defined in this article as uh, having rare qualities. So um, the bad news is that if you look at Tinder, what is the most sexy job? It's for sure not a data scientist. It's uh, a whole list of other um, um, jobs. But when you combine a few of the things in the list of the most sexy jobs, like entrepreneurship, teaching, engineering, working on models and become a student again, then you cover almost half of the list of the most sexy jobs. So in the end, you can, uh, you can um, uh, reach the goal and uh, become a very popular person. But that's just uh, uh, a joke to, uh, to end with because um, I think uh, one of the nicest things of data science is that it really brings a lot of insights and it's fun to do to work with. Um, John, Robin, Stephen, Thanks very much for um, for joining us for this uh, discussion and for the preparations done. And um, again, I would like to say goodbye to all of you, but not to all of you. Uh, for those who are interested to know more about the program, please stay tuned so that in a few minutes time we uh, shift to that uh, type of, uh, of, uh, of, of subject. Um, well, I see that Emil is very happy with this webinar. I hope more people are. and. Um, well, stay tuned, uh, please keep in touch, and we hope to see you soon back again, online or live. I think you uh, purposely misinterpreted the working with models part, uh, Ronald. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, no, no. it's an old joke, Robin. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> a very old one. <laughs> yeah, but okay. it's... Uh... Hey, fijne avond, uh, alle. Yes, okay. Yeah, yeah for those who uh, want to quit now, uh, please uh, have fun and uh, we'll uh, maybe we'll late, meet later. Okay, thanks for inviting. Thanks, uh, uh, Stephen and Robin. Yep. Yes, fijne avond. See you. I'm off. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, I'm now changing the screen to the second part of the session. Okay. Okay, well, we are still with a nice group. It's almost half of the people who joined for the webinar are still online. Um, well, very much welcome to the 
what we normally call it an information session. Um, and this information session is about the data expert track. We have different programs, but this is uh, the cross industry program. Um, as mentioned before, everybody has a story. And uh, um, normally I would ask the people to share their story and why they are interested. So if somebody wants to post it in the chat, why, uh, what is the reason for their interest? That's much welcome. But in the meantime, I just uh, go on and I'll cover briefly what is all, is all about. Um, as an academic director for the cross industry program in the, in the, in the data expert, um, I always like to start with a very simple thing because you can describe data science in many ways, but for me, it's all about finding, checking and applying insights from data for better decision making. If there are no insights for better decision making, I don't think it's really worth the effort. So um, machine learning, deep learning, whatever, whatever type of learning you want to do, it's all finding insights to improve decision making. Another thing which I always refer to is that experience what people have in their job in their business can be the biggest friend and the biggest enemy uh, what i mean is that if people are very much experienced you are less open to data science than uh, when people are very much insecure or in some way insecure but on the other hand you can't leave out experience when you do data science because you need to embed it in your models and the last one is data entrepreneurship which is special for the yacht programs is needed to turn data science into better decisions. And the, most of the other programs at other universities, they do something on engineering and analytics, but not on entrepreneurship. While we think entrepreneurship is most critical for make, turning into real impact, real results. Um, well, the three pillars we already covered, so that's not something to um, uh, talk to about too long. Um, this is a bit of a difficult sheet. I realize that, but I, I want to cover just the main things of it. Um, at YATS, we also have to uh, change our programs a bit and um, to make them better all the time. And what we will do for the next round is we will have a very modular approach. Um, we will have models about data science introduction, data science and practice, and then we have data engineering models. We have data analytics models, data analytics in general, or for certain industries or for certain functions. And then we have data entrepreneurship. And we will offer those tracks and those modules in a short format and in a longer format. And based on the intake we do with you and the interest you show and the ambition that you have, we will build uh, tracks, personal tracks, in which you can bind uh, for sure the introduction part, some of the data engineering modules, some of the analytics modules, and some of the entrepreneurship parts. And as you can see here, we have here the data expert track. That is the most extensive combination, most extensive track, which includes almost all the modules, except that for the industry models and the functional models, you can pick a few. And in total, the data expert track has then 40 uh, lecture days. You see there are some shorter ones for management, for industry, for um, um, for certain functions, for marketing, for example, and we have a track which you can follow after doing a data expert track. This is all work in progress because um, um, we have, uh, yeah, we, we have some uh, things to, to, to tackle. Um, yeah, um, the final design has to be set due to the Corona situation. As mentioned, we will focus on a model little approach, learning tracks and blended learning. Um, the track you will do, it will be based on the intake and the learning speed you can have and the ambition level. Um, the industry tracks as planned now are government, data science for government, energy, health and cross industry, which is the data expert track, the last one. And maybe we will add logistics and agro food, uh, but that's, that's still pending. Uh, so that will follow on later. The learning track is not a regular program. It is based on a lifelong learning vision and it will result in a YATS community membership. So when you do one of these tracks, a short one or a long one, you will become member of the YATS community membership and you will be able to join for additional lectures later on uh, until your retirement, we hope. Um, and as mentioned, the data expert track is a combination of engineering, analytics and entrepreneurship. And it's a mix of 
lectures, teamwork, homework, online learning. Um, it's, it's not a big shift because actually it's what we do at the moment. But to be honest, we would have liked to have more lectures live than we can do now. So hopefully in uh, November when we start again, we, the, the Corona crisis will be a bit less uh, impactful for this uh, whole program. I can cover the, the entrepreneurship modules briefly. That we, we cover uh, data-driven entrepreneurship. We cover decision-making, business models, legal and ethical, and some entrepreneurial skills. And we work with the Lean Startup models and the Business Canvas. Um, analytics is very much about machine learning. We work with uh, Python there uh, and Jupyter Notebooks. And we try to do uh, real yeah, or, uh, uh, tackle real business issues uh, in a, a few rounds. We don't do just one round. We have learned that when you do it a few times, the whole rounds of, um, of uh, data science, you learn more. Um, visualization is in there, decision making again, business analytics. Uh, we do also um, linear programming. Uh, we do text analytics um, next to the regular, um, let's say, figure analytics or machine learning. Um, then we have as a third module data engineering, which is very much focused on uh, um, on the real getting the right, right data. That includes also SQL, Python, Spark, Hadoop, and um, yeah, we use uh, Jupyter Notebooks, I said, Google Colab. We can use Data Camp, but to be honest, we will pick the best online learning program that which is available at that moment. So that can change in the data science world between now and uh, November. Um, next to that, we have some uh, special things like uh, strong teamwork with uh, things like a bootcamp. Um, we use Gaggle, GitHub. Uh, and we do, since a few months, since the start of the Corona crisis, we do online hackathons after class hours. That's the, so somebody brings a data challenge and then we, we make teams and we do online hackathons uh, in small teams and we challenge one another to come up with the best results. I'm watching, okay, there are no questions yet. Um, now, um, normally when you join an educational program, you as a participant are in the middle and you have some teachers and you have some classroom colleagues that's the classic format what we have done at uh, the data expert track we have added uh, sponsors that is uh, that's a person who's uh, helping you out with a special project and maybe it's also the person who is um, uh, paying your education but that's, that's not always the same it can be that you find a sponsor uh, via us for, for example, from the MKB Data Lab or from some other company, and that we link you to a sponsor or to uh, somebody who has a big challenge. Um, another thing we have added, of course, is the open source community uh, within YATS, um, uh, so that you keep learning all the time um, with a lot of colleagues. There is a question from Lee Dwing. Um, despite which area you choose health, you cover all these subjects. Um, now, uh, what uh, in the health program, data entrepreneurship is less important. So there you will focus more on engineering and analytics. I think mostly on in the analytics even. There will be some components which help you in picking the right topic and helping you to give the right advice, but it is not as extensive as the data expert track. So. Um, but you in health, you will have some special uh, lectures on engineering in healthcare, on analytics in healthcare. Um, so uh, there you really get some, I think about 50% of the lectures is really focused on healthcare. But again, it's the, that's the plan for the, the current setup that you can make your track based on your interest, your level of education and based on your ambition. Um, okay, um, just going back to the, the special thing of data expert track or studying at JATS, 
this is not all. We even add something else. Um, moment. We also uh, add to the program that you work in a graduation team. And that means that you, we ask you to ask a few of your colleagues to join you in your learning track. So, for example, if you have a colleague who's good uh, in um, uh, data uh, handling uh, with SQL, we, that's a good thing to join, but also maybe somebody for, from the business. And we prefer you to make a team because we think that learning is the best by teaching. So what you learn then at uh, the lectures, we ask you to bring that across to your colleagues in your job. And hopefully those colleagues are also the colleagues that help you to finish your graduation project for your sponsor. Um, what we also have added are online hackathons. And what we have added is a special program to help you out after the data expert track to copy your knowledge into your company. So. It's not just learning as you will know it from the old times at school. It's uh, quite different um, now. And what we really want to do with you is that you are not only able to listen and to repeat, but also to explain and also to apply things in new areas. So for us, it's one of the greatest things to see that people who've done the program um, actually do a startup or make a big change or a new product or a new service. That is something we uh, we love the most and we will keep in touch with you to make that happen. Um, in the program, we work with the Chris DM model. So that starts with ideation, then you have your sponsor boarding, then you have your business understanding, data understanding, data preparation, modeling, evaluation and deployment. And then of course the final pitch. This is something you will do in, in, in a few rounds. You will do it once with the whole group in total on the same subject you will do it maybe in a small program with your sponsor and then with a large one so that you are really experienced in running this type of programs uh, after your uh, your track our program culture is not such that you uh, will um, um, have uh, examinations it is really the case that we say um, we offer your teachers practitioners techniques and tools and a, and a workshop but if you come out of it with a, a skelter or a Formula One car, that's really up to you. So we offer the learning environment and the challenge you make out of it is really up to you. Let me see if there are any questions. No? Okay, then I'll just cover a few other slides. I will skip all the examples. What is required for joining the program? Of course, uh, uh, relevant education, uh, bachelor or master's level at least three years of working experience in the data-driven environment. Uh, it's also okay if you work 10 years in a less data-driven environment or not data-driven environment. The most uh, important feature to get accepted is motivation. Um, we know that is a, it is quite an, an expensive program and uh, we have learned that um, people really want to make the most out of it and they really love it when their colleagues in the classroom are also very much motivated. And also for us, it is the, the most fun to work with really motivated people. So if you are an independent consultant or if you are an entrepreneur or you are maybe a commercial person or you are a really uh, well-known data scientist already, you are most welcome to join us to really make a next step in your career. So, um, and don't feel um, uh, having um, no experience in programming as a showstopper. You will have to catch up, however. We will offer you tools by which you can learn to program, and, and uh, but you have to do it on your own, not in the classroom. And when you are planning to join without programming skills, please let us know as soon as possible, because then we will help you out to find the right um, track to learn the programming so that you are at least up to speed when you start in November. Um, and of course, most of you will have some programming backgrounds, will have some statistics backgrounds, uh, hopefully, and uh, have some working experience also. Uh, but there are some exceptions, and we have seen that people, when they are motivated, they can make it happen. So um, 
we love to see that when people make such a change. Um, the lectures are in English because we have quite a, a lot of uh, people from other countries uh, joining. Um, because we are uh, in Holland, we have an international culture, so uh, all the times there are people who don't uh, master Dutch, and uh, so everything is in English. We have a, a nice faculty with teachers, we have a nice academic staff uh, around with uh, Chantal in there and Nina. And um, of course, the question is why would you join the program? Uh, well, if you're interested to become a real data scientist, you can do it. You can go up to the level of certified analytics professional. Um, and maybe you think it's uh, a lot of um, uh, spending, but uh, if you make your graduation project already into a paid project, and if you copy your knowledge to other people, uh, then it's, it is really worth the value. So, because then it's not just for one person, you do it, you do it for more, and you can maybe do a project uh, which normally would cost 15 or more days work for a data science consultant. And um, already with such a graduation project, you can uh, earn back your, uh, your, your, your uh, spendings. So maybe when you're interested, uh, you can join uh, for the graduation in uh, the Maribor Chapel. Uh, when there is no corona limitations anymore. Otherwise, we have to do it a bit more separate. Okay, I'll, those are the things I would like, I wanted to cover. Um, there are still, there's still a nice group of people uh, joining this program. Um, does anyone have a question in the chat? Maybe I have to look to the participants. Maybe somebody is raising his hand. I do not see any raised hands. Uh, no? no. Oh, okay. 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 Well, then I think the best way to follow up is uh, then to offer all the participants uh, um, the opportunity to maybe ask questions to, uh, to you, Chantal. Of course, yes, yeah. of course. And I will also share the slides and the recording of uh, of this evening uh, uh, in an email tomorrow. Okay, yeah, that's great. And then, oh, there is one question coming up, I see now. <laughs> ah, okay, Lidwin, uh, thanks for the info. Well, uh, well, you're welcome. It was uh, a pleasure to uh, share it with all of you. And um, yeah, so maybe we'll get in touch later. And uh, we will follow up with maybe giving you some references for people who joined the program or um, well whatever questions it can be okay peter also thanks for your uh, feedback and as mentioned before we we have uh, quite some enthusiastic um, participants of uh, about 80 people now uh, in all types of industry even the police hospitals ministry of finance whatever so if you want to talk to someone who did the program uh, and who you want to ask some questions, please let us know, because we know that uh, those people are the best um, people to uh, check if you can make your data science career happen with YATS. Okay, I want to close down now. Again, thanks a lot for your attention and uh, we'll hope to see you soon. Okay, Chantal, you want to stop the recording?